today's video tutorial is on distance time graphs and velocity time graphs. So first we are going to look at distance time graphs. On a distance time graph, distance is represented on the y-axis and time is represented on the x-axis. On that graph, a flat line indicates that the object is not moving as there is no change in the distance traveled. The unit for measuring velocity is meters per second or ms to the minus one. Also, the unit kilometers per hour can be used to measure velocity. Velocity is equal to the gradient of the line. So if we have a stage of travel and we would like to find the velocity during that stage, we find the gradient of the line. Or we can use the formula distance divided by time. Interpreting a distance time graph. So here we have a sample of a distance time graph and as you can see, distance is on the y-axis and time is on the x-axis. Where we have a graph that is going upwards or a line with a positive gradient, then it has a constant speed or velocity. Where we have a flat line as seen in this part from B to C, it is stationary or not moving. And where we have a downward slope or negative gradient, we are going back to the starting point. For example, a car that's leaving home, going on an errand at point B, staying there for a few minutes, then going to C and then heading back home. Velocity time graphs. On a velocity time graph, velocity or speed is represented on the y-axis and time is represented on the x-axis. On a velocity time graph, a flat line indicates that the object is traveling at a constant velocity. Deceleration is negative acceleration. So if we see that a vehicle is travel is has an acceleration of minus 10 meters per second squared, it means it's slowing down because of that minus sign at the front of the number. The unit for acceleration and deceleration is meters per second squared or meters m slash s squared. It is also measured in kilometers per hour squared. From a velocity time graph, Acceleration can be found by calculating the gradient of the line at that stage. To calculate the distance, we can calculate the area under the graph and the distance would be equal to that area. Average speed is equal to total distance traveled divided by total time. So when interpreting a velocity time graph, as we can see, velocity is on the y-axis, time is on the x-axis. Where we have a line with a positive gradient or an upward slope, that means that the vehicle or object is accelerating. Where we have a flat line, it means that it's traveling at constant velocity. Or that means if it's traveling at 80 kilometers, it remains at 80 kilometers per hour throughout the stage. It's not increasing speed nor decreasing speed at the flat line and then where we have a line that's sloping downwards or a line with a negative gradient then it's decelerating or slowing down just a point to note that in the distance time graph and a velocity time graph these slopes and represent different things so for example in a distance time graph a flat slope had represented it was stationary and not moving. Whereas in a velocity time graph, it means that it's going at a constant velocity. Examples. Example one, a car has stopped at a traffic light. When the light turns green, it accelerates uniformly to a speed of 28 meters per second in 15 seconds. The car continues to travel at the speed for another 35 seconds before it has to stop 10 seconds later at another traffic light. So part one, draw a speed time graph 
showing the information above. All right, and speed time and velocity time can be used interchangeably. So solution, this is our graph and we can see that from our question, I'm just reading it again. So a car is stopped at a traffic light. That's at this point, it's not moving. When the light turns green, it accelerates uniformly to 28 meters per second in 15 seconds. So at this point, it's now going upwards, accelerating at 15 seconds on the x-axis. It's going to reach 28 meters per second on the y-axis, so we reach until this point. The car continues to travel at this speed for another 35 seconds. So that means that it's maintaining this 28 meters per second speed. So it is a flat line during this time and it is for 35 seconds. So after we had stopped at 15, 35 seconds from 15 will bring us to 50 seconds. So that flat line is going from 15 to 50 on the x-axis. All right, that's that interval. Then before it has to stop at a second traffic light 10 seconds later. So at 50 seconds where we have reached, 10 seconds later will take us to 60 seconds and the vehicle is stopping. That means its velocity is now going to be zero. So this is our stopping point. And this is how our graph was derived. Acceleration, constant velocity, and deceleration, slowing down, and eventually stopping at this point. Part two, calculate the distance traveled between the two traffic lights. So the entire graph that we looked at in the previous part showed the distance or the journey between those two traffic lights. At this point was where he, the vehicle was leaving the first traffic light. This was the journey throughout and at 60 seconds was where the vehicle reached the second traffic light. So that means that this entire graph represents the journey between the two, two traffic lights. And as we saw earlier, the formula for calculating distance traveled is the same as calculating the area under the graph or the area of this shape. There are two methods for calculating the area of this shape. The first method would be to find the area of this trapezium. The second method would be to break up this shape into two triangles and, two, and a rectangle. And then we find the area of the two triangles and the rectangle and we add the areas together to get the area of this compound shape. I'm going to do it using area of a trapezium. So area for trapezium equal a half a plus b, a plus b are the parallel sides of the trapezium multiplied by the height. So that's a half of 60 plus 35 multiplied by 28, which is equal to 1330 meters. Part three, calculate the average speed of the car in over this journey in kilometers per hour. So that means because we want our final answer in kilometers per hour, then distance must be in kilometers and time must be in hours. So before we start our calculation for speed, we need to convert our units. So total distance traveled from our previous part of the question was 1,330 meters. To change this now to kilometers, we divide by 1,000, which gives 1.33 kilometers. Total time in hours from our previous part of it. We see that our time was measured in seconds on the x-axis is in seconds. So 60 seconds is one minute. And in terms of an hour, one minute, the fraction would be one over 60. So that's where this came from. Average speed is equal to total distance divided by total time. So I'm using my two answers from above, the distance being 1.33 and the time being one over 60. And this will give 79.8 kilometers per hour. Example two, 
A bus starts from rest at station A and travels a distance of 80 kilometers in 60 minutes to station B. Since the bus arrived at station B early, it remained there for 20 minutes, then started the journey to station C. The time taken to travel from station B to station C was 90 minutes at an average speed of 80 kilometers per hour. So there's a lot of information that is given in the question and we need to read each part of it carefully to be able to work it out. Part 1. Determine the distance from station B to station C in kilometers. So the information that was given concerning this part in the question was that the time taken to travel from station B to station C was 90 minutes and the average speed was 80 kilometers per hour. So for our solution, we are going to represent our time in hours since our units would be in kilometers per hour for speed. Time taken was 90 minutes. In terms of hours, that will be one and a half hours. The speed was given to be 80 kilometers per hour. We have come across this formula before. Average speed is equal to distance over time or total distance over total time. And if we should make distance the subject of the formula, we would have distance is equal to speed multiplied by time. And our speed is 80. Our time is at one and a half. And when we multiply, we will get our distance between B and C to be 120 kilometers. Part two, draw a distance time graph to illustrate the motion of the bus. So this is what the graph would look like. So I'm going to explain how we got this graph. So a bus starts from rest at station A. So we are assuming that station A is here at the origin. It travels a distance of 80 kilometers in 60 minutes. And we notice that on our x-axis, the time is in minutes, right? So at 60 minutes, we should reach a distance of 80 kilometers. So that's our corresponding values at this point. Then the bus arrived early at station B and it remained there for 20 minutes. So at this point, this is station B, it's going to remain here for 20 minutes. So at 60 minutes, 20 minutes later is going to take us to 80 minutes. The bus is not moving, it's stationary. So that's why we have a flat line for a distance time graph. And after that 20 minutes has ended, it goes from B to the point C. And we know that it took 90 minutes to reach the C. So from 80, 90 minutes after that will take us to 170 minutes. And to get the distance from here, from this point to this point, we are using our answer from the previous part of the question, which is the distance from B to C is 120 kilometers. So that information is used for this graph. So from this point, when we are leaving B to get to C, we are going from 80 to 200. That's our 120 kilometers. So this is what the distance time graph looks like for this question. So to do any question concerning velocity time graph, distance time graphs, you just need to read the question carefully, make sure that we interpret all the important information that is given and use our knowledge to represent it on a distance time graph and then we can use our graphs to answer any other question that is asked in an exam or assignment. So here we have an assignment. We have two past paper questions for you all to attempt. This is CSEC past papers, June 2010, number 9A, and June 2011, number 9C. So thank you for listening 